said the starfish, but if you go beyond the coral reef, a deep cave, you will find the wise octopus. Maybe she can help you. So there's the rainbow fish confiding in the little starfish. And he's like, if you want to know all the answers in the world, you have to go over yonder a mile that way. And you will find the magical cave with a giant octopus who will tell you all the answers you need. So off he goes on a mission. The rainbow fish found the cave and it was very dark inside and he couldn't even see anything. Then suddenly, two eyes caught him in their glare, and the octopus emerged from the darkness. So there's the octopus in this giant cave, and there's the rainbow fish trying to get some advice. Bum, bum, bum! I've been waiting for you, said the octopus in a deep, deep voice. The waves have told me your story. This is my advice. Give a glittering scale to each of the other fish. You will no longer be the most beautiful fish in the sea, but you will discover how to be happy. So there's the rainbow fish getting some advice from the octopus, and he says, if you want to be popular again, you want to hang out with all the fish, you need to give up every single scale you have, give one to every single fish you see, and then you will be happy again. <clears throat> but, but I can't, said the rainbow fish. I, I can't. The octopus had already disappeared into a dark cloud of ink. Give away my scales, my beautiful shining scales? Never. How could I be happy without them? So the rainbow fish is in a predicament. He's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am not going to give up the one thing that makes me the most beautiful fish in the land. Uh uh. That is not going to happen. How could I give up every single one of these? This makes me literally the most beautiful fish ever. This is not going to happen. But suddenly, he felt the light touch of a fin. The little blue fish was back. Rainbow fish, please don't be angry. I just want one little scale. The rainbow fish just wavered. Only one very small shimmery scale, he thought. Well, maybe I wouldn't miss just one of them. So there's the rainbow fish learning how to share. He's like, you know what? Fine, I'm not gonna miss just one, but you're the only person I'm giving one to, okay? So don't tell anyone about this. I'm giving you one scale and that is it, mister. So there he is, he pulls off a scale, he yanks it off and gives it to the tiny blue fish. Carefully, the rainbow fish pulled out the smallest scale and gave it to the little fish. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much! The little blue fish bubbled playfully as he tucked the shiny scale in among his blue ones. A rather peculiar feeling came over the rainbow fish. For a long time, he watched the little blue fish swim back and forth and back and forth with his new little scale glimmering in the water. So there he is, bubbling with joy. He's swimming around, gliding in the water with his one shiny scale. It makes him so, so happy. The little blue fish whizzed through the ocean with his scales fishing or flashing. So it didn't take long before the rainbow fish was surrounded by the other fish. Everyone wanted a glittering scale. The rainbow fish shared his scales left and right and up and down and everywhere. And the more he gave away, the more delighted he became. When the water around him filled with glimmering scales, he at last felt at home among the other fish. So there he is. He still has a few scales left, but now every single fish in the ocean has a glimmering scale just like him. Finally, the rainbow fish had only one shining scale left. His most prized possession had been given away, yet he was very happy. Come on, rainbow fish, they called. Come play with us. Here I come, said the rainbow fish. And happy as a splash, he swam off to join all of his friends. So now he's popular with all the other fish and they live happily ever after. The end. That was the end of our first story, The Rainbow Fish. What do you guys think of that one? We're going to move on to our next story up, but I want to see what you guys thought of that story. I thought that one was so much fun. It's very wholesome. Basically, if you join late, the moral of the story is learn how to share because if you don't share, people are not going to like you, but if you do share, then everyone's going to love you and you're going to be awesome and you'll live happily ever after. <laughs> Let's see. Someone said, yay, it was awesome. They're early. You loved it. It was awesome. It was cute. You loved it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. So we're going to move on to our next story, guys. So if you saw my my recent video I posted a video about how Ed Astor which is the guy that plays the old man in up he unfortunately passed away. He died on August 29th, I think, which is really unfortunate. So in his memory, we're going to be reading the book about him. This is up. It's such a wholesome story. I love this one so much. So everyone in Ed Astor's memory, we are going to be reading this awesome story. So I'm going to give you guys, let's see, we're just going to do like 10 seconds of just talking to each other, just so we could let a few more people flow in. We have 1,800 people in here. And yeah, so this is going to be our next story of the night. I know RIP, it's really sad, but his legacy is going to live on forever with this awesome book and the awesome movie. 
literally, I think I want to watch it again. I was watching like the beginning scene where like they show his love story and it literally touched my heart. Like I almost wanted to cry. It was so sad. <laughs> but anyways, here we go, guys. We're going to read up. So once again, everyone, make sure you're all tucked in. You have your blankets on. You have your candy, your popcorn, your snacks, and you're all ready for our next bedtime story of the night. And also don't forget to register for tomorrow's bedtime stories. All you have to do is click that little event button in my bio and you guys can register to get notified whenever I have bedtime stories. So here we go, guys. We're going to read up. Bum, ba da bum, up. Here we go, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, stranger, and Varquez, and everyone. I appreciate it. This little golden book belongs to all my bedtime besties. So it belongs to Gurp and Diego Goal and The Love Lane and Zero One M and Two Solid and everyone else. This book belongs to you. Up. Carl Fredrickson lived alone in a little wooden house. He spent his days with this memory of his wife, Ellie. So there he is in his chair, and he's this really old man, and unfortunately, his wife passed away. But all around him, things were changing. People wanted Carl to leave his house so they could put up more buildings, so Carl came up with a plan. So here he is in his little house, and everywhere around him, they're just destroying houses to build all these apartment buildings and everything, so they're just trying to get rid of him. Hundreds of balloons lifted Carl's house into the air, and he had tied the balloons to the house so that he could fly away. So there he is. He had this genius plan to tie literally 